Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you had an awesome week. I hope your weekend is starting off well and you are here and ready to learn and that's fantastic. Welcome Yanni. Hi Fuang. Hi Domenico. Nice to see many of our members. Daisy Lee, Angel, Jot. Good to see many of our uh, regular viewers here with me today. In this class we are looking at IELTS speaking part one. Speaking part one in the IELTS focuses on a general topic, some common idea in society and the questions are related to you in part one and today's focus will be on animals. Of course animals Everybody knows them. Most people love them. Hopefully everybody loves them. And, um, and so it's definitely a topic that could come up for you in your IELTS exam. Now, uh, this material is presented to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS, visit us there. Uh, for general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. These are the websites we use in our live classes. We will use the websites in this class as well uh, for speaking, to speak with our students. We will do mock IELTS speaking questions, give you band score estimates, and then I will give you tips on how to uh, improve. Students, uh, the websites, they look like this. You might as well register, if not a paid account, you can register a free account so you can volunteer for speaking later on. This is aehelp.com. Uh, to join our premium package, you can click this big red button that you see just above my head there. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. It doesn't cost much money at all and it will help you to increase your band scores for the IELTS so you don't have to pay again for a very expensive test and, um, and necessarily sit the test again. We are an IDP affiliate. We are a British Council partner and we're an IELTS Test Registration Center. I'm a certified British Council agent and we help thousands of students uh, succeed and uh, improve for IELTS and English communication every day. Um, this is the general version of our website. We separate the academic version for university and the general version for immigration. It makes sense. However, the speaking is the same for both. So your speaking interview uh, looks the same for both the academic and the general IELTS. Again, you can just click that big red button there to join the premium package. When you do that, um, when you click that big red button, um, then uh, you can use that discount code that we've had for the last uh, two weeks, Mark9, uh, for a 10% discount. So Mark9, that's what you want to use. All right, we'll come back to the website later when we start doing our speaking uh, volunteering. Um, just a little bit more information to help you. Uh, we have apps that power um, your learning together with the websites. Go to your app store, uh, check out Academic IELTS Help um, or check out General IELTS Help and uh, download it, uh, link it to the website and begin learning. Um, also, you can visit us on Instagram, IELTS underscore AE Help or G IELTS Help. Um, we have the world's most advanced online IELTS course ready and waiting for you. Um, and uh, if you have questions, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. Uh, we've got uh, several classes for you this week. So we have uh, reading after this speaking part one class. And then I will um, hold a writing class for members uh, tomorrow, task two, uh, followed by speaking part three. And on Sunday, on Sunday, uh, we will have another Light Hall class. Light Hall is like YouTube, just maybe even better for live classes. Uh, you get to video and audio chat, and it's real time. 
All right, uh, there's the link in the chat, so you can click that link and then uh, register for free uh, for our Light Hall class. And when you have a few minutes in the day, definitely check out some of our mock IELTS speaking interviews on our channel. They're very popular. There's one for you that's kind of new uh, in the chat as well. So make sure to uh, hang around, uh, be here with me in this class. Uh, subscribe to this channel to get all of the strategies and help that you need for your next IELTS exam. And with that administrative information out of the way, uh, let's get cracking on IELTS speaking part one which again is a 12 to 15 minute interview face to face um, in the same room as the examiner or via computer uh, face to face. In most cases, you have to go to the exam center and use a computer there. Um, and in some countries now, you have the option to do it from home and you can register for that test on our websites. I'll show you that a little bit later on. All right, good. Unkit, uh, welcome aboard again. Uh, good to have you in the class. So you go to our IELTS speaking interview and uh, it's a formal interview. Dress semi-formal to formal. Uh, dress comfortable, okay? So present yourself well. Uh, go to the interview early. And when you go in the examination room, again, the examiner will meet and greet you and they will say, Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. It has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. I'm recording this for marking purposes. The speaking exam is being held in Vancouver. The time right now is 14 o'clock. This is examiner number 9531 exam center X7YQJ and candidate number 99547733. Now we shall begin. For part one, I will ask you some questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. May I see your identification? Pretty much the first question every time uh, from the examiner because if you don't have your ID, if you lost your ID between the time that you registered, and you're speaking, they will excuse you and they will not let you sit the exam. So make sure you don't lose your passport or your ID card. It's basically the only thing you have with you at this time. All right, and in the chat, I see that lots of students are ambitiously answering this first question, the may I see your identification, which is fantastic. Um, Fuang, our member says, Yes, certainly. Here's my passport that I have used to register a couple of weeks ago. Please have a look at my credentials. All right. In this case, it would be had instead of had or just used. Okay. And that's a nice full sentence, Fong. Good. That's a strong band nine start. That's what you want to do. Show fluency uh, right away. Now make sure, students, that as you're doing this, as you're writing your answers and responses in the chat, make sure to speak and repeat. So Fuang, I hope that you are also not just writing, but you're saying, yes, certainly. Here's my passport that I'd used to register a couple of weeks ago. Please have a look at my credentials. Students, for these first few questions, copy the speed. Okay. So copy my speed, my pronunciation and intonation, okay, of my speech. Uh, I speak with West Coast uh, North American accent, so Vancouver, Seattle, uh, Los Angeles, you'll hear people speak like me in these places. <clears throat> nice, clean, crisp uh, pronunciation. It's the pronunciation you see in many of the Hollywood films. So copy it as much as possible, okay? All right, nice, that was great. Let's take one more. 
All right, this uh, answer is the will of Dickie Friday. All right, um, so that one looks like this. Uh, yes, here's my passport that I used to register with, okay? Um, so Dickie Friday, um, it's not registered with, it's register with, okay? Because used to is your past in this sentence, okay? And even when you're doing text language, use capital I for I. So yes, here's my passport that I used to register with. You should finish this. Uh, please have a look. Or pl please take a look. That's more complete. Okay. All right. And then the next question they ask you is, what is your full name? Um, and you have to give them your name, the same name that is in your passport. If it's different, they might look at you weird. Like, hmm, what? Why? And this question, what should I call you? They will ask you this if you do not answer it. So if you do not answer this question, they will ask it. So you should automatically always answer this. Tell them what you want to be called. Okay. Unkit, one of our newer members, hi Unkit, um, says, hey, you can do this. You can say, uh, my given name is Unkit and my family name is uh, Prajapati. Please refer to me as Unkit. Yeah, very nice and polite. I like this, please refer to me as. That's great. Please refer to me as Unkit. It's a very polite professional. Um, please refer to me as even more formal than saying, please call me. It's very nice. It's, it's showing that you recognize that this is a formal interview. You have to give your best communication, your best uh, vocabulary, your best effort, energy. Um, so it's nice. My given name is Ankit and my family name is uh, Prajapati. Please refer to me as Ankit. And then they won't ask you the question of what should I call you. Okay. Ahmed Ziada says, well, you could also go in this direction with your answer. My full name is Ahmed Mohammed Mansour. Please just call me by my first name, Ahmed. Very nice, Ahmed. I like it. It's fluent. It's clear. Do not make mistakes, students, in these first um, uh, answers or responses. It just sounds really bad when you're making mistakes in an introduction. Some people say, oh, well, I heard they don't mark you during your, the introduction. Not formally, but informally for sure. If you cannot introduce yourself with clean, clear English, it's going to be very difficult to convince the examiner that you deserve a band seven or a band eight. Because band seven means that you're a good user of the English language. Now, a good user of the English language can introduce themselves without mistakes. So these answers have to seem natural and accurate, even if they are not marking you, okay? Of course they're marking you. They're marking you from the first time that you say a word, okay? So Fatima says, uh, sure, my full name is Fatima Ativa. You may call me Fatima. Okay, Fatima, that is good. <coughs> Excuse me. I had that sneeze coming on for a while there. Okay, and then they ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better. So these questions, again, they're very common, many of them, um, such as, you know, what are your hobbies? Um, what do you do in your free time? So make sure that you practice um, those questions regularly and practice giving them you know a different type of answer each time so you can sound natural uh, so this could be um, a good uh, question to practice it's a common uh, icebreaking question um, testing your past tense different questions in the IELTS exam test for different kinds of grammar Make sure you recognize the grammar of the question and then reflect it. So what did you do yesterday? This one, um, make sure to paraphrase some parts. 
use the question in your answer and then give a full sentence uh, response with details. Okay. Chen says, um, yesterday I visited my friend John's house to work on our presentation for a college project in the topic computer technology. We pre prepared some animated slides in Microsoft Word and it was superb. Okay, good. That's awesome. That's a great answer. <clears throat> Chen, you might say even something like last night um, Thursday For me anyway, for some of you it might be getting very late now on a Friday, but last night Thursday I visited my friend because yesterday was Thursday. Show the examiner that you know it was Thursday. So last night Thursday I visited my friend John's house to work on our presentation for our college project in the topic. It's on the topic. On the topic of computer technology. Uh, we prepared some animated slides in Microsoft Word and it was superb. Yeah, very good. Okay, Chen, now it's clean and accurate. Paraphrase as much as possible. Yesterday, last night, Thursday, I visited my friend John's house to work on our presentation for our college project on the topic of computer technology. We prepared some animated slides in MS Word and it was superb. Perfect answer. Answer with example. Okay. Nice job, Chen. See, Chen's giving a thumbs up. Got it. Just a couple of small corrections there, Chen. Nothing major. Still sounded very natural. All right. <clears throat> and good use of past tense, Chen. You always want to show that past tense. This is ja by um, Jotsna Reddy. Says, yesterday I completed my office work and prepared and focused on preparing for my IELTS during leisure. Okay, too short, too quick, with mistakes, uh, Josna. Um, Josna, uh, let's uh, improve this a little bit. So yesterday, I completed my office work. and focused on preparing for my IELTS exam during uh, my leisure time. Why? How can we finish this sentence in a natural way? So, you have to answer the why question, students. How would you answer Josna's, uh, or how would you finish uh, Josna's answer. What kind of an explanation should you include? How should this answer finish so that Josna is not just getting a band 6 but getting a band 7 or an 8 or an 8.5? So yesterday I completed my office work and focused on preparing for my IELTS exam during my leisure time so that I can get the best score possible for my uh, graduate studies in the US. Um, that would be the completion to that sentence. Romelia says we could also throw in an idiom and say burning the midnight oil. Um, yeah, it's not bad, Romelia. It sounds kind of forced and it's one of the most popular idioms for many students, the burning the midnight oil, studying hard. I would almost stay away from that um, just on the IELTS because it's so popular, it's so overused. You don't want the examiner thinking that, oh, here's another person who's going to use a whole bunch of memorized responses. Just now, you are very welcome. So just now, remember those explanations, okay? Students, very important. Um, answer, explain. Example, this is the pattern, okay? 
<clears throat> that you should be uh, considering for those high band, band scores. Seven and greater. Okay. So if you want those high band scores, and I assume that most of you do, um, then you want to follow that pattern of answer, explain, and example. And that's the pattern. That's just, it's, it's not because it's for IELTS, it's because it's for good communication. So good communication uh, follows that pattern, okay? All right, and then uh, although it's a formal conversation, the uh, IELTS interview is intended to be conversational for the most part, other than part two. So they will ask you follow-up questions like, did you do anything to relax? So it's like, what did you do yesterday? Okay, uh, well, you completed your office work and then you studied for IELTS so you can get a nice score for your undergraduate studies. And then did you do anything to relax? Okay. So, mashup world or mashup world. Sorry, mashup world. I see that now. Uh, mashup world answers this. Okay, um, Mashup World says, relaxing is a part of our life. Here is used to listen soft music so that I can become more relaxed. By this way, I finally get relaxed. Okay, Mashup World. Some important tips for you here. Okay. Um, first of all, students, in the IELTS exam, um, don't introduce your answer. That's false when um, some IELTS training um, materials are telling you to introduce your um, answers. They are wrong. You should not introduce uh, your answers. So um, this part here Mashup world. Mashup world is one of our viewers, by the way. Uh, relaxing is part of our life. Um, the examiner didn't ask you about this. So, um, ask you this. If you answer in this way, uh, where you are introducing your answers uh, in an awkward way, your score will go down to a band five and the examiner will start interrupting you. Okay. So uh, keep that in mind, students, that um, that if you're introducing your answers like that, then you will not get a better score. And even though some IELTS videos or materials or teachers might say, oh, use the question and introduce it. Like a lot of people like to relax in the world, as do I. For my relaxation, I like to read a book. Um, no, you have to start directly with your answer. In order to unwind, I read books, I listen to music, I do this frequently, usually in the evenings. Uh, this morning, uh, to de-stress, I listen to half an hour of smooth jazz before I came to this exam. Great. Direct answer. Sounded original. That's what you want to do. Okay? You're very welcome, Mashup World. So other than this first part, let's take a look at what the rest of that was. So Mashup World says, um, I listen to music. Let's correct all this grammar here. I listen, duh, because it's past tense. I listened to uh, soft music so that I 
uh, could, not can, it's all past tense, watch your tenses, could become more relaxed uh, for this exam today. Um, don't repeat what you say by this way, I was finally relaxed, that's just a repetition, okay. Um, it was quite helpful and now I'm uh, feeling confident in my English and uh, my scores. Okay, good. Um, so repeat after me. Did you do anything to relax? I listened to soft music so that I could become more relaxed for the exam today. It was quite helpful and now I'm feeling confident in my English and my scores. Okay, good. Uh, then let's continue by talking about animals. So they will at this point introduce the topic. And here we go. Um, what is your favorite type of animal and why? It's about you. So again, answer directly. Do not say something like, well, there are lots of people who like animals. Or don't start by saying, I like a lot of different kinds of animals, but the one that I think is the best animal of all, no, start with your favorite, my favorite animal, the animal that I like the most. Or if I had to choose, I would say it's this animal, okay? All right. So, nice full sentence answer. I see many of you are still thinking about the last answer, which is the what did you do yesterday. Uh, Fuang, I don't think it's an interesting question. So Fuang says, well, that's an interesting question. I really love dogs. I don't think asking somebody what is your favorite animal is an interesting question. It's just a question. It's a it's a common question, right? A lot of times people ask, you know, what's your favorite type of animal or what kind of animal do you like? So I wouldn't start by saying that's an interesting question. Um, so be careful. Uh, Deep Kaur says, to be honest, I am not very fond of animals. Um, don't give a negative answer. Everybody likes one kind of animal. And if you say I'm not fond of animals, it's kind of a mood killer, okay? So uh, here's a tip, students. Answer in the positive, okay? Use positive answers um, because you do not want to kill the conversation, okay? Uh, you are the focus of the IELTS conversation and it is your responsibility to uh, keep it clear and keep it interesting and keep it going. The examiner is not your ESL teacher or your pal. They are an expert uh, who, or I should say they are experts who are um, assessing your best English ability. Okay. So before you get confused, because I think there are a lot of people that don't realize or don't pay attention to this. So you are the focus of the IELTS conversation. You're in the lead, okay? The examiner is there all day long, one candidate after the next. This is candidate number 9953333. This is candidate number 77444. This is candidate number 953444. All day long they're there doing this and they're asking questions. They are not there to help you improve your English. They will not correct you. They will not ask you to repeat. They will not give you advice on vocabulary and grammar. They don't want the truth. They don't want to get to know you. They don't really want to know who you are. 
All they want is to hear and assess your best English ability. So it's your responsibility to keep the conversation interesting, clear, and to keep it going. If you tell the examiner, I don't like animals, that's a conversation stopper, okay? You can't be a conversation stopper. This is not an ESL teacher that's going to say, oh, okay, dear, no problem. Well, let's talk about um, technology then. Maybe you like technology, let's, let's do that, okay? They're not going to say something like that. They're just gonna go, okay, all right. Here comes some short answers. We'll give you a quick band six. Next, candidate number 9977334455555. Okay, I don't want to be that harsh guy to tell you that, but that's the reality of it. And I don't want you going in there thinking that you're in an ESL exam, English as a second language exam. You're not, okay? The examiner is not your ESL teacher or your friend. They're not ESL, they're not English as a second uh, language institution. There are experts that are uh, assessing or measuring your best English ability, okay? That means clear, fluent answers and use positive answers. They make conversations go forward, okay? Everybody clear on that, on the positive answers? So, um, you know, here is an answer from uh, Shizo. And students, just to make sure that I'm not just speaking to myself here, you can always give me some thumbs up or, okay, Adrian, I get it, or, all right, positive answers. It's actually smart to reverberate the exact advice that I'm giving you, like, okay, Adrian, I got it. Use positive answers and then a thumbs up in the chat, right? Um, and then that way, uh, I know that you are picking up what I'm putting down, okay? So, what is your favorite animal? Shizo says, the animal I like the most are dogs. Uh, they are friendly and spend time, spending time with them helps me forget everything for a short period of time. Okay, <clears throat> so the animal I like the most are dogs. They are friendly and spending time with them helps me forget my troubles, not everything. Okay, we don't say everything. Stay away from everything, nothing, something. Those aren't good words. Uh, helps me forget my troubles for a short time. My dog, Sparky, is the cutest in the world. If you don't have a Sparky, pretend like you do. Why not? <clears throat> okay. All right, I see some thumbs up by Chen. Harry, Ja, Yanni, Gloria. All right, good. So repeat after me. The animal I like the most are dogs. They are friendly and spending time with them helps me forget my troubles. Um, you can just say this, okay? I like uh, dogs the most. I like dogs the most of all. Um, they are friendly and spending time with them helps me forget my troubles for a short period of time. There. Um, be natural. Be natural. I like dogs most of all. All right. Romalia says... I am a dog person and the reason why I adore dogs is that they are so loyal and affectionate. Okay. Um, sure. Um, now, let's give an example. When you're talking about an animal that you love, uh, whether it's a cat or a dog or a giraffe, you probably have a really good example for that, okay? So, Romilia, you can say, I'm a dog person, and the reason why I adore um, them is they are so loyal and affectionate. Uh, my friend's um, poodle always um, jumps up and wags his little tail uh, when I am visiting. 
It is so cute. Okay. So nice answer, a uh, dog person, nice uh, collocation expression there, Romelia. So repeat after me. I'm a dog person and the reason why I adore them is that they're so loyal and affectionate. My friend's poodle always jumps up and wags his little tail when I'm visiting. It's so cute. Okay. Wag the tail means beep, 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 like this. Wee, 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 wee. It means they're super happy to see you. Okay. Okay, Romelia says, my great Dane greets me when I go home with unconditional love. All right, that's awesome, Romelia. Exactly what I was thinking. Uh, Vishal says, thank you, Adrian. After watching your videos, I got a band seven. Vishal, congratulations. Vishal, send me an email. Anybody who does their IELTS and they feel that we helped in their journey, um, we would love to get your testimonial and um, get your your email so uh, send me your testimonials or your emails to adrian at aehelp.com and if you have any questions you can also email me there students so we love to get your uh, your feedback and your results okay it helps us to be motivated it helps me to get into these classes and keep going and keep keep motivating you to do well Okay, students, so uh, next question. Um, do you have any pets? So first question, what is your favorite type of animal? It's kind of a typical question that everybody should be able to answer. Do you have any pets? All right. Anahita says... Anahita says, um, no, I don't keep any animal in my house for a couple of reasons. First, my landlord doesn't allow it. Second, I am a sensitive person to microbes, so I can't stand uh, cleaning pets. Okay, Anahita, not bad again. Remember, um, positive answers are often better, even if it's kind of a lie. So if you make up a cat or a dog that you own, it might actually be easier um, but okay fine you don't want to lie to the examiner you want to tell them the truth and so you don't have any pets and you want to explain why you don't have any pets that's fine but just be really careful students positive answers are often easier and better and the examiner doesn't care if you have a pet or if you don't have a pet um, to them it's just a question and even if they can tell that you're just making things up, it's fine. They're not going to uh, mark you negatively for that. They will like that you're keeping the conversation going. So, okay, no, I don't keep any animals. Uh, it's a plural. I don't keep any animals in my house for a couple of reasons. Firstly, okay, our first is okay, first. Uh, my landlord doesn't allow it. Second, I'm sensitive to microbes, so I can't stand. Um, having to clean up after pets okay um, now this is where it kind of gets interesting right so the examiner's like why have you had a pet or is this something you did in the past okay um, and you might finish that on a by saying I uh, always had to clean up after our cat furball and it was a real headache okay so here's a nice full band nine level response do you have any pets no i don't keep any animals in my house for a couple of reasons first my landlord doesn't allow it second I'm sensitive to microbes, so I can't stand having to clean up after pets. I always had to clean up after our cat furball, and it was a real headache. Okay, now that's clear. All right. Um, Pratiksha Mala. Let's see what Pratiksha has for us today. All right. Um, 
Pratiksha says, Yes, I have a dog whose name is Jamie. He is with me from the couple of months and I got it as a gift from my father. Okay, let's clean this up a bit. All right, this would be about a band um, five level answer because of grammar and too short. Okay. So here um, you'd want to say, yes, I have a dog whose name is Janie. If Janie is a he, then you need to use that throughout. And he has been with me uh, from the couple of months, for a couple of months now. A couple of months and I got him. You can't say it if you already said he. If you said he here, we know that Janie is a boy, Pratiksha. So we need to stay with the boy, okay? So, and I got him, okay? You can only use it if we don't know if it's a he or a she. You cannot switch to it, even with an animal, after you have used he, she. Okay, everybody clear on that grammar tip? So, and I got him, it's very, it's for a native listener, they will pick that up right away. They'll go, didn't you just call your dog a he, so is it an it, a he, or a she? Which one is it? Gift from my father. Okay. Um, all right, so here is a much better answer grammatically. Now it's going to be at least a band eight. Okay. Because it's got clean grammar and uh, it's got a bit more information. So yes, I have a dog whose name is Janie and he has been with me for a couple of months. And I got him as a gift from my father for my birthday. And I would probably include something like, he is an adorable uh, American Cocker Spaniel. Okay, so <clears throat> there. Now we know what kind of dog it is. Let me see that dog. There's so many different kinds of dogs, like Romelius that are Great Dane. Ooh, like a the big, big dog, right? Here it's the American Cocker Spaniel. It's a little dog with long, little hairy legs. So cute, right? All right. Um, Alexander says... Um, I have a black cat called uh, Michael Jordan. We just call him Mike for short. Okay. Alexander's cat, Michael Jordan, maybe a basketball playing cat. Okay. Uh, Chen says, as I had previously mentioned, I have a dog named Tommy. His fur is white and he has he's a little bit fat with a long tail. I love playing with him in my spare time. Chen, I made a few corrections there in real time. Marco says, unfortunately, I don't have pets because I live in a small apartment, which is not the best habitat for an animal. Despite this, I would like to have a dog in the future. Marco, very nice answer. I hope that you end up with a cute little puppy in your future. Um, Rocky says, certainly I have a dog in my house. He is very friendly and loves to go out for a walk whenever I uh, take his leash. Rocky, what kind of a dog is he? What kind of a, what's, what's your dog's name? Be specific in the IELTS exam, okay? Dicky Friday says, yes, I have a pet named Oreo, um, he, the dog, and uh, my cat named Max. Oreo is a Shih Tzu, uh, really cute, adorable, and playful. And Max is a um, black cat with white patches on his fur. All right, sounds very, very cute, Dicky Friday. A couple of slight oddities in there, but it's okay. All right, I wanted to read a few of those because I know that many people 
love their pets and they want their pets to be known to the world. Uh, Thao Nguyen says, I had a pet dog named Moon. He is uh, adorable and fluffy. Okay, so all past tense, Thao Nguyen, all past tense. I had um, a dog. Where did it go? There. Um, so Thao says, I had a dog named Moon. Um, he was adorable and fluffy. He made me feel better and chased away loneliness, but he passed away and since then I've decided not to have pets with me anymore because they are so hard to lose. Yeah, Thao Nguyen. Um, okay. Cute. My condolences for uh, Moon. All right. Uh, Yanni says, of course, I've had a couple of dogs since 2019. They always protect me from dangers. My dogs Juno and Goldie accompany me when I am frightened. All right, Yanni. Um, so let's do some volunteering. Let's uh, let's practice some speaking now um, in uh, real time. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So you'll actually not hear only my voice, but you will hear the voice of your peers and fellow students as they share their answers. I will let you know what they are doing well, well, where they can improve, how they can improve. So to volunteer for IELTS speaking, go to our website. You can go to either one that I showed you at the beginning. You can go to aehelp.com or you can go to gieltshelp.com. This is free. You do not need to pay if you do not want to. You can use this for free in these live classes. You log into your My Student account. You click on Student Partner Speaking. You enable your microphone. Make sure your microphone is working. Make sure your internet is working. And then you send me a message. You say, I want to volunteer. You will see my handle as master. So master will be my handle and click on that blue envelope, okay? On the blue envelope and just say, uh, I want to volunteer. Can I speak? And I will ping you. I will let you know, okay? All right, so this is the website, aehelp.com. To join our premium package, you can click these big red buttons. Um, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. We use the websites for learning materials for these live classes, the exams, um, the speaking, the audio materials for the listening, the reading materials for reading for a reading class that's coming up after this one. So it's good to join our premium package um, and it's good to click those big red buttons. But again, if you are into it for free, um, then you can click that green uh, try demo button, okay? Uh, when you do that and then when you sign up, you will have a My Student account. Okay, in your My Student account, you will have this uh, student partner speaking along with the uh, computer-based practice exams, uh, writing task one, task two help. You can even register for your IELTS exam. It's behind me for the home-based version. But right now, um, students, we are using this uh, function here, the student partner speaking. When you click on that, you will be in this space, in this window, uh, where you can see lots of students uh, who are in the chat as well on YouTube. So you can see Yash, uh, Peter, Romelia, Ipshita, Domenico, Yanni, Zoraida, Alexander, Fuang. Um, and then you can send me a message. Dhruv Raj sent me, I think, a message here. Let me show you. Um, Dhruv Raj uh, says, um, I want to volunteer. All right. Well, let's. I saw Duvraj first here, so let me reach out to Duvraj and um, see what's going on. Oh, I didn't answer back to Duvraj. Hi, Duvraj. Hi, can you hear me? I can. How are you doing? I'm doing very fine. Awesome. Very good. 
Good. I kind of surprised you, Dubrush, because I, I didn't send you a message back. I usually send a message like, are you ready? But I'm glad you're here. Um, Dhruvraj, uh, can you tell all of the people watching where you are from and why you are planning to do the IELTS? Um, I am from Ahmedabad and it is in India. Okay. And I'm doing guys because uh, I want to do masters in computer science at uh, Canada. Okay, in Canada. Yeah. Awesome, exciting. Uh, do you have a plan for when you're going to do the IELTS exam? Uh, yeah, like uh, around 24 or 25th of this month, or uh, next month. Okay, of November, right? Yeah, of course. November, yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely not this month because then you're traveling back in time um, so uh, that's good you've got a few weeks to go that's fantastic four weeks that's plenty of time to prepare make sure you're using lots of English during that time um, Dhruvraj let me help you with it then let me get you into some speaking part one are you ready yes I am okay. ready all right um, let's do this so uh, welcome to the uh, speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. Uh, for part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Before we begin, may I see your identification? Yeah, sure. Here it is. I have used it uh, to register the exam. What is your full name? My full name is Dhruvraj Latya. You can call me by my first name, Dhruvraj. What do you like to do in your free time? Well, uh, I do love to uh, listen to music, and when I'm uh, when I'm listening to the music, I love to swing as well. So there is a, a really giant swinging. Uh, there is a giant swing in the facade area of. Did you do anything oh, I, to relax yesterday? Uh, yesterday, yes, I I did uh, uh, swing at the swinging that I had that we have uh, in the facade area. Let's talk about animals. What is your um, favorite animal? Uh, I love dogs. Uh, they are my favorite kind of animals because I love how um, they look and as well um, how they behave around the owner. Uh, there, is, uh, there is a dog called Tommy uh, at our na neighbor's house and he's really cute and adorable. Do you have any pets? Uh, I don't have any pets, but in future I might consider uh, having one because as I said, it, they are so cute and I love them how they behave around the uh, Owners. Why is it good to keep pets? Uh, I think uh, one reason why uh, we should keep pets is because uh, they are adorable and they are the uh, they are uh, they can help the humans in um, many activities like um, going to the work. They can guard the house, so that is that is one thing. Okay. All right, so I'm going to stop there and then I will give you some feedback. So your speaking score, uh, according to the IELTS marking criteria, which includes uh, coherence, fluency, grammatical range, grammatical accuracy, lexical resource, which is vocabulary and pronunciation. So all of those factors considered, you would probably get about a band 6.5 um, for your responses so far. Um, you're losing two and a half band scores because um, you have some grammatical mistakes that are slightly awkward and unclear or inaccurate um, in your uh, responses and also you're losing some for coherence because um, some parts of your answers uh, don't have absolutely clear information and that's where a little bit more lexical resource and a little bit more content comes in so having more vocabulary to express yourself um, in a clear way and having better structure okay let me show you this uh, Dhruvraj uh, real quick with your answers and then it'll make more sense okay so just give me two seconds um, so here I said may I see your identification and then you started with yeah sure here it is 
and um, that's okay definitely put in the next part you said I have used it to register the exam um, you don't want to make mistakes right from the beginning um, so I have used it to register for this exam okay so I know it's tough because I know a lot of students are really nervous at the beginning and um, uh, it's hard to avoid mistakes when you're nervous, but you really have to and you have to say these two parts quickly together So you can't have like a big pause you had a big pause there and in the real IELTS exam I'm afraid that they'll just go to the next question. So um, uh, Dhruvraj just repeat after me. Okay, and this is for everybody. So just repeat me. Yes, sure here it is I have used this for uh, this exam. I have, sorry one more time. Yes, sure here it is I have uh, Used my passport to register for this exam. Go for it Yes, sure here it is. Uh, I have used it uh, to register for this exam. Okay much better so more fluent, okay? All right, and then um, the what is your full name, Dhruvraj? Instead of saying you can call me by my first name, Dhruvraj, uh, say please can you call me? Okay, so just repeat after me. Please, can you call me by my first name, Dhruvraj? My full uh, my full name is Dhruvraj Latya. Please call me by my uh, first name, Dhruvraj. Perfect. Please call me by my first name, Dhruvraj. It's more polite. It's more kind of respectful in the situation that you're the examinee and I'm the examiner. Okay, so instead of you can call me, please call me. Okay. Okay. Right. So yeah, so instead of instructing me to call you something, ask me to call you um, your name. Okay, by your name. Um, and then I asked you a couple more questions. Um, I asked you, did you do anything yesterday to relax? Uh, when you're talking about your hobbies, Dhruvraj, and this is for everybody, keep it really simple for the IELTS exam. Uh, you told me that you like to listen to music and that you like to sing as well, right? And that was good, but you started to go into a lot of detail about your singing and it became a little bit awkward and confusing and I wasn't really sure what you were telling me about your uh, singing. So just keep it simpler, okay? Um, can you repeat the word after me? Because it sounded like you're saying swinging with a W, okay? Um, you want actually, to... Yeah. Actually, I was talking about the swinging only, but because of my, I, I guess, because of my accent, you are singing. Okay, do you mean swimming, like in the water? Swinging, no, no, like uh, we have swing, right? Like like swing dance or swinging at the playground, like like swinging back and yeah. forth. Is that what you're so, talking about? Yeah, yeah, swing. Okay. There's a giant swing that we had uh, that we do have uh, in many of the like. Uh, okay. Playground. Okay. 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 Got you. All right. Um, okay. So you want to be clear with that. That can be really yeah. easily misunderstood because swinging is also a dance style. So there's a, a type of dance called swing dance. And, oh, you know, I, I get swinging, right? But for adults, it's less common that adults or older children are on the swing. It's fine. There, there are people, of course, that have that as kind of a, a way to relax or um, to unwind sure, but you have to be clear. Okay, so uh, On the IELTS be really careful if you're introducing some unique ideas or unique concepts That are hard to explain and that could be confusing even if you're speaking perfect English, right? So um, So I would answer it like this Ruvraj, for that one um, When I have spare time I like to uh, sit on the swing uh, near my home. Uh, is the swing at a playground or is it at your home in your yard? Uh, at the, in the facade area. So it's, it's at your house? Yes. Okay. So when I have spare time, I like to sit on the swing in my backyard. and swing for 10 minutes. Um, it helps me, so this helps me to unwind and uh, collect my thoughts. Okay, 
So that's a little bit clearer. So repeat after me. When I have some spare time, I like to sit sit on the swing in my backyard and swing for 10 minutes. This helps me to unwind and collect my thoughts. Okay. When I have a spare time, I like to sit on the swing in my backyard and swing for 10 minutes. This helps me to unwind and collect my thoughts. Okay, much better. That's a much clearer way. So if you're introducing a kind of an interesting concept like that, you want to be very, very clear with it, okay? okay. All right, um, so that was pretty good. And then your answers talking about animals, um, they were okay as well. You could, again, use a little bit more vocabulary, a little bit clearer explanation. So when you're practicing at home, Dhruvraj, really focus on clarity. So clear explanations and good use of vocabulary, okay? To improve your score to a seven, seven, five, all right? For November. Okay, Thank All right. You. You're very welcome. Dhruvraj, keep up with the practice and we'll talk again soon, okay? Definitely. Okay, bye Dhruvraj, thank you. All right, give Dhruvraj a thumbs up for volunteering. He was the uh, first, um, uh, first volunteer of this week. So uh, good job, Dhruvraj. Thank you for volunteering. Uh, let's take somebody else. Um, Peter, what kind of name brothers? Peter's my middle name. So let's see what Peter's doing. Peter, are you ready? So we're going to take some more volunteers. We will go through more and more of these part one questions talking about animals. Thank you for giving Dhruvraj a thumbs up, Fong. That's very sympathetic. Jahanvi, uh, you can join the chat by going to our website and signing up for free and then clicking on student partner speaking. Uh, Peter says, I'm ready. Okay, Peter. Hello, sir. Hi, Peter, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great, how about you? I am also doing fine. I can see that you wrote that you're a bit nervous and that's totally okay. Um, yes, Peter, um, I'm nervous. <laughs> all right, don't, you don't need to be. Um, I don't bite, I'm just a regular old guy sitting here in Canada helping you with your English. Uh, Peter, what country are you in? Uh, I'm from Vietnam. I'm you're living in uh, Adult City. What's the name of the city? Hanoi City. Hanoi. Okay, you're in Hanoi. Okay, got yeah. you. Um, and why are you taking the IELTS exam? Um, uh, the reason why I take the IELTS exam because I want to get a, you know, better opportunity to get into university. Yeah, and I have heard that a lot of universities in Vietnam require the IELTS exam. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Which makes sense. English is the yep. global language and universities now want their graduates to speak the global language. So that makes sense. Okay. Well, let me uh, help you a bit and I will ask you some part one questions. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Then let's talk about animals. What is your favorite type of animal and why? Uh, one of my favorite type of animals is dog because for me, dog is very loyal and friendly. It's not aggressive as cat. In fact, I uh, just adopted a dog a few weeks ago. It was from uh, China. Why is it good to keep pets? This for me is crucial to keep pets in your house. Basically, uh, I think uh, it will help you to improve your family ties, make your family relationship much stronger, and animals can uh, protect you from other uh, bad guys and strangers. Are there any animals that you are scared of? Of course. Uh, I'm terrified of uh, spiders, some kind of uh, things, uh, animals that have six legs and many eyes. I'm also scared of uh, scorpion. 
because it's very uh, poisonous if uh, it hits you. Okay, I'll stop there and give you some feedback. All right, um, so you would get about a band, um, I think close to seven for your answers. So you're definitely at a strong 6.5, possibly at a band seven. Your pronunciation is very good. Your pronunciation would be easily a band eight, I think. You have very clear English. Uh, your lexical resource or vocabulary is closer to a six. Um, there are a couple of words that were missing from your answers that would have made them better and clearer. Um, and yes. um, you have to pay a bit more attention to content, especially when you're switching your pronouns. Okay. Uh, let me show you what I mean by that, Peter. So I said, why is it good to keep pets? And then you started by saying, for me, it's crucial uh, to keep pets in my house. Now, um, this word crucial here, you have to be careful. It's a little bit awkward the way you used it here. Um, why is it crucial? If it's crucial, it means that you must have them. Like, um, it's crucial for me. I'll, I'll give you an example. It's crucial for me to keep a dog in our house because there are lots of thieves in my neighborhood. So the dogs protect my house. That means it's crucial. Okay, um, so you have to kind of pay attention to when you're using that word crucial. Okay, here it didn't really make a lot of sense. Um, for me, it's great to keep pets. It would be better. For me, it's great to keep yes. pets in the house because they not only guard my home, but also uh, create happiness and harmony. Uh, within my family. Um, I can feel this when uh, I play with my dog and brother together. Okay, I see. so that would make more sense. Um, but instead what happened um, is you switched your pronoun. You said it will help uh, to improve your family life and then you switched from the me and the my to your and you said animals can protect you from bad guys but you started with for me okay so you can't switch your pronoun yeah. while you're speaking because then the listener will be like okay so we started talking about you but now suddenly we're talking about me it's confusing so it creates problems with the scores okay so be really careful yeah. with that part all right don't um, don't don't add the you Okay. Uh, can you just repeat after me, Peter? Uh, for me, it's great to keep pets in the house because they not only guard my home, but also create happiness and harmony within my family. I can feel this uh, when I play with my dog and my brother together in the backyard. For me, it's great to keep pets in the house because they not only guard my home, but also create happiness and harmony within my family. I can feel this when I play with my dog and my brother together. It would help. Mm -hmm. mm -mm, mm -mm. Do I need to read those red? No, no, letters? definitely don't want to. Red means stop, right? Red means don't read. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Um, so, do you see, Peter, how that's just much more smooth? It's much smoother, I should say, and, and yeah. it's much clearer. Um, so, make sure you don't jump between those uh, pronouns, okay? Otherwise, it was very yeah. good. I liked how you said that you recently adopted a uh, dog from China. It was very clear. Uh, so you did have some nice answers there uh, for sure. Um, one more quick correction here. Uh, are there any animals that you are scared of? And you said, of course, I'm terrified of spiders. It's a tricky one because yes, spiders belong to the kingdom of animals, but we tend not to think of them, especially in English. We have this separation between the insect world and the animal world. So if we're talking yeah. about animals, uh, then you should say, yes, I'm terrified of big dangerous animals like bears and lions or tigers, um, especially if I were to face them in the wilderness because they can easily kill me. Um, but if you want to talk about spiders, then you have to make that clear. 
Um, so you would say something like, of course, um, I'm not too scared of animals like dogs or lions, but I'm scared of insects. So you have to say I'm terrified of insects. Yeah. such as okay. uh, spiders, okay? Because we don't tend to consider spiders and insects as animals in day-to-day -day conversation, okay? Um, scorpions, you said they're poisonous. Um, and then I think you said they're poisonous if it hits you, okay? Um, scorpions don't hit the person. Do you know what they do? I actually uh, remember the word for the scorpions when they hit you but i forgot the word you know yeah it so starts I with an said hit instead yeah and I, and I can tell okay and your examiner will immediately catch that verb replacement um the correct one starts with s s yeah Couple sting people, sting. sting that's right they sting you yeah okay <laughs> so kind of a common verb and you know, if you forget like a difficult piece of vocabulary, then the examiner is like, okay, I can still give you a band seven or eight. But if you forget a piece of vocabulary that they think is kind of a common vocabulary, like sting, sting is not really an, it's not considered an advanced vocabulary. So if you forget that vocabulary, it does kind of hurt your score because you know the examiner's thinking well if you're good at English because band seven means that you're good at English you should be able okay. to use the word sting no problem right so careful with those simpler verbs okay all right yeah. um, Peter good job though um, yes. you're definitely on the right track uh, thank you so much for volunteering keep up the good work yes thank you bye for now Peter I'll see the IELTS exam at the end of this year Oh, keep coming so back. Hopefully, I'll get a 6.5. I, th I think you'll get a 6.5 for sure, but you should aim even higher. With your English, you should be aiming for at least a 7. So just keep practicing, keep coming back. Okay, Peter? Okay. Right. But my writing is so bad. <laughs> just keep writing, keep I reading and writing. <laughs> okay, okay, Peter, we'll help you more later, all right? Yeah. Bye for now. Hope you uh, a good day. You too, thanks. Bye. All right, that was Peter. Um, all right, um, and I can see Yanni and Bazu and Domenico and Chen said it's sting, and Faith said it's sting. Yeah, scorpions sting you. They with their little tail, those little buggers. Okay, um, sting. Let's take somebody else. Um, we haven't heard any female voices um, today. I think uh, Yanni. If I'm not mistaken. Let's see if Yanni's there. Yanni, are you ready? Okay, hopefully Yanni's here. I believe Yanni is a she, if I'm not mistaken. Right, Yanni, our member. Are you there, Yanni? You seem to be in the chat. <laughs> That's why I'm... Because, yes, okay, there you are. Hello, sir. Hi, Yanni. How are you? I'm doing fine today. And how about you? I am a little bit on the tired side, but really, I have really good energy today. Thank you for asking, Yanni. <laughs> okay. uh, do you have any plans for the weekend, Yanni? On the weekend? This weekend? Mm -hmm. Yeah, any special plans? Um, I don't think so, but I will prepare for my remedy IELTS. Awesome. Okay, that's kind of a special plan, right? <laughs> All right, um, Yanni, let me ask you a couple of part one questions. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, well, let's keep talking about animals. Are there any animals that you are scared of? Of course, I have. Uh, I'm frightened of, of horse because it has a, a horse has a big size. I ever fallen off from horse because uh, they are they are. Um, oh, sorry, can I repeat my question? Um, no. <laughs> In the real IELTS, you wouldn't <laughs> want to do that. So you just want to finish, okay? Uh, but yes, okay. In this case, for practice, you can. So let me um, let me ask you one more time: Are there any animals that you are scared of? Of course, I have. Uh, the animals, the animals that I have scared is horse because uh, they uh, because horse has a big size. I have fall 
when I am five years old, I have fallen from uh, a horse because uh, he stumbled by a stone. So right now, I still have a stitches on my forehead. Which is the most unique animal in your country? Hmm. Uh, I think a rabbit has a unique, um, a unique um, animals in Indonesia because they are they are, they are very cute, and people usually want to be to be uh, the ones cat to be their their pet. Um, my neighbor have an expensive. Um, rabbit because they can uh, catch the mouse in the house. Have you ever seen an elephant? Uh, oh, yes, I have ever seen elephants. Uh, I usually spend my time uh, in my zoo with my families to see uh, to see the elephants because they are very big, and I'm interesting on elephants. So I have ever. Um, riding on a, in on elephants um, in Bogor Zoo. If you could choose to be an animal, what would it be and why? If I have a chance to turn into an animal, I would like to, uh, to turn. I would like to cosplaying cosplaying as a eagle because they have a uh, white wings and can fly into another place so uh, i can so i can um, go into uh, other countries without any payment okay all right um yani so hard to ass assess your speaking. You have some really good parts to your speaking and you have some parts that need some improvement, okay? So for example, in some cases, you have really good vocabulary. Like uh, for instance, in this last question, when I said, if you could choose to be an animal, and you said, if I have a chance to turn into an animal, that's perfect English, perfect paraphrasing, lovely to hear, band nine level start to this answer. But then right away, you said something like, I would cost ream or cost, I couldn't catch um, it. Cos it. Cosplaying. Cosplaying, okay. <laughs> All right, cosplaying, let's not even get into what that means. Our viewers can um, Google that when they have a chance. <laughs> but um, that's awkward in this context. Um, you definitely would get a smile from the examiner, even a very serious one. Um, so um, instead of uh, cosplaying, I would say I would transform, okay? All right, so I would transform into an eagle. Um, and then you said, um, so I could go into any other countries without payment. And this is a little bit, so I understand it, but the grammar and the language is a little bit awkward sounding. Okay. Um, eagle, um, because uh, eagles can. Uh, eagles don't usually fly. We don't just say fly for eagles. Do you know what we say for eagles, what the better verb is than fly? Some people might help you with this in the chat as well. What do eagles do? They have their wings open and they just kind of, they don't flap their wings. So they don't, they don't do this, right? They don't flap their wings, eagles. What do they do? A couple people in the uh, chat there are helping you. Uh, faith has the right word and Abraham. Oh. Soar. Yeah, eagles soar. They soar the skies. Exactly. Because they, they it's it's also called gliding. So they glide, but for eagles we specifically say soar. So and it's different spelling than the painful. Painful soar is S-O-R-E. Okay. Um, and soaring the skies is S-O-A-R. So they're homonyms but not uh, spelled the same. So I would transform into an eagle because they can soar the sky and fly great distances. Um, okay. Um, so I could go uh, not into any country but to any country. Mm -hmm. 
any country. Uh, and then you said without payment. Um, yes, <laughs> birds don't. Birds don't need to show their passports, right? And they can just go from from one place to another. So I could go to any. So I could go to any uh, country uh, without um, restrictions. Okay, um, and I could visit the entire world. Okay, sure. Um, so that's clear with more accurate grammar. Uh, Yanni, just repeat after me, okay? okay? So I'm going to finish the the response and then just copy when I'm done. Um, if I have a chance to turn into an animal, I would transform into an eagle because they can soar the sky and fly great distances. So I could go to any country without restrictions and I could visit the entire world. Yanni, if you could choose to be any animal, what would it be and why? If I have a chance to turn into an animal, I would transform into an eagle because they can soar the sky and fly great distances. So I could go to any country without restriction and I could visit the entire world. Okay, great. So um, when you have a chance, Yanni, listen to your previous answers too about the elephant and the horse, okay? And see if you can make them a bit better grammatically and with vocabulary. Um, your answers the way that they were could get you a score as low as 5.5, maybe a 6. But if you correct that grammar in some of those parts and use a little bit better language, then you can definitely get up into that six, five to seven range, okay? Okay, I hope so. You can, just keep practicing, Annie. Your vocabulary is very good, so make sure to use it properly. Lots of practice, okay? Okay, sir. All right, bye, Annie. Thank you so much for bye. volunteering. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much, sir. You are most welcome. All right, that was Yanni, our member. Give her a thumbs up. She's doing really well, practicing every single day in Indonesia. Uh, let's take one more volunteer for the day. Let's take Zoraida. Zoraida, are you ready? Are you here? Okay. Uh, thanks for all of the thumbs up. Okay. All right. Zoraida, if you're still with me, let me know. And then uh, you can try a couple of these questions and, and remember to give answers, explanations, and examples. Zoraida, are you there? I can hear that you picked up and I think we've connected before. So I'm not sure what's going on. Are you there? Zoraida, I can't hear you. You have to check your connection. You have to make sure your mic is enabled, okay? And uh, that you have a good, strong connection. So check that out. Try it with another student, see what's going on. All right, let's take somebody else. Um, let's take uh, Christine. We've we're still a little bit short, I think, on female volunteers right now in this class. So let's do that. Christine, are you ready? Oh, very quickly. Nice. Thank you, Anxizie. I appreciate your compliment. Hi, Christine. Hi, Christine. I can hear you. How are you? Hi, Christine. I can hear you. Hello. Hi, Christine. Hi. How is your Friday? I miss being do, go, doing well. How about yours? Uh, it's just starting. It's quite early here still in Western Canada. So, But so far, so good. Thank you for asking, Christine. Okay, Christine, uh, may I ask, where are you calling from? What country are you in? Well, I am calling from the Philippines. From the Philippines. And why are you taking IELTS? I am taking IELTS because I want to pursue my master's in Canada. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, yep, that will definitely need a Niles uh, score. Well, let me help you. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about um, animals. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, here we go. Which is the most unique animal in your country? Um, my country is actually blessed with lots of endangered species, but I would say it's the Philippine national eagle, who's really, um, which is really interesting because it is, it has a very long wingspan and it can really soar up into the highest altitude. Have you ever seen an elephant? Yes. In fact, I've seen an elephant um, last time we went, when we went to Thailand. They are allowing the tourists to ride on the elephants, but I didn't really ride on it because I don't feel it's safe and I feel bad for them. If you could choose to be an animal, what would it be? If I could turn into an animal, I'll probably choose to be a, a cat because all they do is just sleep all day long. And who doesn't want that, right? <laughs> Especially now that I'm sleep deprived. So turning myself into a cat would probably help. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stop there. That's the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two, but part two we're going to be doing next week. Um, so we'll do part three this week, tomorrow. Um, so that was really great. That was great. Fantastic. Um, okay. Right off the bat, your answers would get you a band 8.5 for sure. You're very close to a nine. Um, there are just a couple of small... Uh, oddities that I caught in your responses so a couple of words or prepositions that were a little bit off but otherwise you sounded almost like a perfect native speaker from some country wow. um, so it sounded to me like you know I was speaking to I don't know somebody in New Zealand for example um, but I could still catch that you were just a little bit off so that's very difficult to correct it's very tricky to go from a band 8.5 to a 9 it takes a lot of practice it's actually the most difficult to make those small band differences um, but that will happen the more that you use English the more you recognize those small tiny little mistakes um, and uh, and overall you did very well you used the question you used the grammar of the question you spoke very naturally confidently you gave good explanations and examples they were original answers uh, your vocabulary was spot-on as the British like to say um, so mm -hmm. Uh, for instance, uh, I asked you which is the most unique animal in your country and you said um, my country is actually blessed with many endangered species. So you immediately introduced this well-known collocation, endangered species meaning animals that we have very few of in the world. And um, that immediately told me that you understood what it means to have a unique animal. Endangered species are unique animals and that was a very good connection, not only in English, but in thinking and in communication. And then you said, but I would say that in the Philippines, um, it's the national uh, eagle, which is very interesting. I kind of wanted to put a feeler there. <laughs> yeah, and it was okay. Um, it's the national eagle, which is very interesting because it has a large wingspan. Again, wingspan means the distance, the size of the animal's or the bird's uh, wings, and that's uh, great. And it can soar very high. Uh, sure. Okay, so that was good. Um, and then I asked you, have you ever seen an elephant? And right away you used the present perfect. You said, yes, I have. And then you used it again. You said, I have seen an elephant the last time I was in Thailand. Um, you said people were riding them, but you didn't because you felt kind of bad for them. It was very natural and very clear. Uh, and then if I said, if if you could choose an animal, what would you choose to be? And you said, if I had a chance, I would choose to be a cat because cats have the chance to sleep all day and I feel a bit sleep deprived. So who wouldn't want to do that? <coughs> Sorry, again, very clear, very good um, use of English. 
using the word sleep deprived, meaning not enough sleep. Um, very good, very nice use of English. So it's just very small mistakes that you're fixing. Okay, Christine? Okay. Yes, um, I'm and I wouldn't worry too much about those at this point. So I think, you know, whenever you're ready, you can sit the IELTS exam. Um, you don't need to focus too much on fixing those small mistakes in the sense that as long as you review your speaking, listen back to it and ask people to correct you if it's off, then just by being surrounded by native speakers, like when you're in Canada and you're in your, your master's program, you will start to lose those little tiny mistakes, like your brain will start to switch over into the correct uh, prepositions or uh, word forms very easily. You're right. My problem is really with the prepositions, but if, like what you said, I really find it hard to correct. Mm -hmm. Some would say that it's like a fossilized mistake that, they like are. what you have said, it's yeah. very hard to change. Yeah, they are fossilized mistakes, but you do want to correct them. So when you realize, okay, and you can tell people that around you, you know, as you get to know them, like your thesis uh, supervisor, when you're doing your master's, for instance, you can say, I'm aware that I have some um, difficulties with prepositions. Please correct me if I'm off. And then, uh, and then they will, and and you'll get the hang of it. So it's you can correct it, okay, All right. So, um, but for the IELTS, you're definitely ready to get a great score, Christine. That's the good news, okay. Thank you. I will book my test next week because that's of what perfect. you said. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. You'll do great. Okay, uh, bye, Christine. Have a lovely rest of your day, and hopefully you'll volunteer again before you sit that test, okay. Okay, I'll definitely will. Thank you. Bye for now. Um, that was Christine. Okay, lovely, lovely English. And that's it for today. No, wrong. That's not for it for today. I have a reading class coming up for everybody in about 30 minutes. Okay, so uh, don't go too far. It's not it for today. Uh, we have a reading class for our subscribers. So if you want to join the chat, in the upcoming reading class, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and we encourage you to do that so that you can get notifications, okay? Um, thank you so much to all of the volunteers and to all of our members. I will be looking out for you members in the next class to volunteer for some reading. Uh, remember everybody, we're using our websites, aehelp.com and glshelp.com for these live classes and we will be using these websites in the next class for the reading so make sure to sign up for our premium IELTS package by clicking the big red buttons on the uh, home page it's a one-time payment uh, for lifetime access right above my head and you'll get the reading materials that we need for next class okay um, so we'll do reading. We'll give our viewers a chance to read as well. We'll go through some questions together and that's coming up next class. And until then, stretch your legs, uh, grab a glass of water, hydrate, and then come back and join me um, in a little bit. Um, and I will be here uh, to help you improve your scores even further. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria here in Western Canada. But I'm back very soon. Bye for now.